There are more UFO sightings than ever before. Strange lights. Alien life. A UFO. What lies behind this increasing number of reports? What the f*** is that? Four expert UFO investigators are hunting down the truth. Maureen Ellsbury is a respected UFO journalist. I've studied literally thousands of cases, and most have rational explanations. Mike Barra is an experienced aeronautics engineer. Before I believe in flying saucers, I'm going to need hard physical evidence. The other two investigators believe that aliens are already here. Daryl Sims is a private investigator and ex-CIA. I was abducted by aliens. I think they're a force for evil. And Stephen Jones claims to have had contact with extraterrestrials. ETs are walking down the main street right now. In this investigation, a UFO hotspot... This UFO came out of the sky and stopped. ...gets even hotter. There's something moving. Oh, wow. Three right there. ...and hard evidence of a top-secret government cover-up... It's the smoking That's gun. what I wanted to know. ...leads to a shocking encounter. Watch out. That is a military helicopter. In fact, it's a Black Hawk. They're all these Black Hawks! Go! Sedona, Arizona is one of the top UFO hotspots. In the last 10 years, sightings have doubled across the state to over 3,000. Now, the investigators are in town to discover whether aliens are behind this UFO activity. To gather evidence, the team invite local residents to a meeting. Hi, everyone. So the reason we came out is because we'd like to ask you a few questions. How many of you have had a UFO sighting in the Sedona area? Wow. So how about you, sir? What was your story? A few weeks ago, I wanted to take pictures of the stars, and I did. And as I started taking pictures of the stars, this object came out of the sky and stopped, and I'd never seen an aircraft stop just like that. To me, that was absolutely unnerving, and looking at the pictures was even more unnerving. How many pictures of it did you get? I have lots of them. So many people have great sightings, but all they have is a story, and this guy seems like he can back up his story with pictures, so I really can't wait to get out there. there there's, a, there's a lot of activity going on here. I saw a gigantic craft with military aircraft, and anybody that lives in Sedona, Arizona knows that we all had the wool pulling over our eyes, don't you guys think? Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I say something? I'm the type of guy that doesn't like to show up for this. I'm a former state senator in Washington state. So as a former state senator, you must have a little inside knowledge. Do you think the government knows more than they're letting oh, on? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm coming out on a limb to be able to say something like that. Okay. All right. Well, we'd love to talk more with you. It was great to see so many people from the Sedona area come out and share their stories. Almost the entire crowd had either had a UFO sighting or experience, which is pretty impressive. And nearly all of them believe that there is a government conspiracy going on to cover up alien activity in this area. To find out more about the ex-senator's startling claim of a government cover-up of UFO activity, the team traveled to a secret location to meet with David Schmidt. This is where we're supposed to meet him, right up here. Okay. Oh, there he is. That's him? Okay. Yeah. So what do you think they're covering up? There's more UFO sightings here in the greater Sedona area than anywhere else in the world. When I was in politics, I was looking into UFOs. And that's when I experienced being lied to as a senator. I think it's obvious they're covering up the fact that UFOs exist. And they've come to understand the technology of those spacecraft. What is the technology that allows them to travel all the way across space and come here? It's free, clean, renewable energy that could be available to all of us. That's what they don't want to let out. This secret technology comes out, what happens to our world? The government, no, if that technology comes out in the open, 
we've got very powerful, strong money industries that go away. The oil and petroleum industry goes away. Coal and nuclear energy go away. Do you have anything, any kind of documents, anything at all that can specifically link government activity to the, the UFO cover-up question? I don't have any documents because they wouldn't give them to me. The senator claims that the government is hiding secret alien technology. But aeronautics engineer Mike Barra needs hard evidence before he begins to buy into it. I've heard all these conspiracy theories a million times. There's never any documentation. What I'd like to do now is move on to a guy named Wilbur Allen who came to the meeting who says he has photographs of an actual UFO. Now that is something I can really sink my teeth into. The investigators head into the desert to meet Wilbur Allen, who claimed at the town hall meeting that he had photographed a UFO. This could provide vital evidence to support the senator's claim of a government conspiracy. Wilbur. Nice to see you. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Good to see you. Good. Hey, Wilbur, good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Zems. Wilbur. Nice hey, to see hey. you, sir. So tell us about the experiences you've had in Sedona. Um, well, I started uh, shooting here uh, in October in 2012. And as I set up my camera, I noticed this object in the sky, and it stopped above my head. And I photographed this object. Well, you know what? If, if what you're saying is true, you are like a skeptic stream. You got those with you? Yes, I do. Let's get them. Let's go take a look. Let's go look. Okay. Let's see what you got here. This is the UFO that came out of the sky and stopped. Is this as it's slowing down? It was slowing down. It stopped. Okay, here's what, what I want to get at now. Is this one photograph or a series of exposures? This is a series of photographs. So it's a series of time, time lapse time, exposures. Time lapse. The camera is firing a frame every second. Right. And then what I did, I made a composite. Okay, so this is a composite of one second a, exposures. That's what, okay. Exactly. Are they consecutive? They're consecutive. Okay, so this is seven seconds in time we're looking at right here. Yes. One, two, three. And I can see there's a bunch of stars here. They're a little blurry. That looks consistent with that. It appears that there's white and red lights on the object, um, but they they're look like they're rotating. Activating. Yes. OK, what I'd like to do is ask your permission to take these to photographic analysts and have them looked at and checked for authenticity. Not a problem. Great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I'm very impressed with Wilbur. He produced photography some of the lights I haven't seen. I mean, I couldn't believe some of the stuff I was looking at. Wilbur seems like a really cool guy. The images are interesting. I'm not entirely convinced, so I'll be interested to see when we do some analysis what we get out of that. The team take Wilbur's photograph to be tested by Jim Dilatoso and Michael Higgins, both leading experts on photo analysis. So what we're here for today is we'd like you to take a look at some images we have and just tell us whether they've been photoshopped, whether they've been faked or altered in any way. Sure. Great. Please proceed. Please proceed. Okay, so here's the shot that you uh, brought me that was shot here in Sedona. And what we have here is a composite done very well where the stars have all been aligned on the seven shots, uh, showing us something flying in, leaving some serious streaming right. to the visual resolution of the camera. So the first shot, you've got a lot of stream coming off of it, showing motion. And notice there's no, no uh, flare on the leading edge. Right. Everything's the tail edge. We come here, it's getting smaller, it's getting thinner. We come here, it's really thin. That means this is slowing down. Yeah. Frame by frame. Exactly like mm -hmm. he said. And the thing is, by the time you get here, it looks like it's now a it's solid. Now it's stopped. But then also, we've got a rotation of the lighting. Uh -huh. Here we've got uh -huh. red, blue, red, blue, as it were, and then blue, red, blue, red. Here's red, blue, red. And then when we get down to the last picture, it's, there's no trail at all. It looks like it could very well be standing still. So I gotta ask you, you're saying that this photograph, in your professional opinion, is genuine, no Photoshop or anything? I would say it's a genuine photograph. 100%? 100% is a hard thing yeah. to, uh, to go, because I wasn't the one holding the camera right. at the time. But I would say, in my experience, that this object was not faked. You know, Wilbur's photograph is absolutely remarkable. It shows something extraordinary. But the fact is, is that just because it's extraordinary doesn't mean it's alien. Do those match conventional aviation aircraft lights? It's not a plane. Uh, you're not going to get indications of speed like this. Yeah. Right. 
But they also don't stop. But a helicopter stops. So maybe it's a helicopter. Well, no, it's not a helicopter because these multiple colored lights, it's not like anything that I've ever seen on a helicopter. I would say that the odds are really good that this is an intelligently guided craft. At first when I looked at it, I thought it was a shooting star or some sort of celestial object until I saw those little red and white lights. And then honestly, it left me a bit perplexed. I, you know, cannot explain that. That is a spaceship. Four alien investigators are in UFO hotspot Sedona, Arizona. A town hall meeting has led to claims by an ex-senator of high-level conspiracy. Government are covering up the fact that UFOs exist. They've uncovered photographic evidence of UFO activity over Sedona. This is an intelligently guided craft. That is a spaceship. Now, UFO journalist Maureen Ellsbury has set up a meeting with town hall witness George Pilgrim. Thanks for meeting with us. Looking forward to hearing more about your story. George claims to have seen UFOs and military aircraft flying together over Sedona. Aeronautics engineer Mike Barra wants to know more. So George, first thing I'd like to hear from you is what the experiences were. Was it military activity? What kinds of aircraft were they? It was just a red object that looked, it was going so fast you could barely distinctly make it out and chasing after it. And there was black Apache helicopters. One came right over the house. Daryl Sims is an ex-CIA operative with experience of covert military operations. George, I'd like to pin this down a little closer. Did any of them have any markings on them no, at all? No, I didn't see any markings on any of them, no. Okay, so that's really interesting because any aircraft that operates in civil airspace is supposed to have a civil serial code on it somewhere. It has to be visible. That was one weird thing. The other thing is that it just disappeared up into the mountains over Bradshaw Ranch. And I thought, that's kind of weird. Let's go check it out. As I hiked through Bradshaw Ranch, two very big, kind of look like football players, approached me with guns. They look like normal people, you know? They look like, I don't know, timber guys, you know, in long shirts, they have camouflage on them, and they were very professional and very, very to the point. You know, I just saw strapped on guns, and they were big old boys, and they were pretty nasty. They look like soldiers dressed like civilians, Civilians, basically. correct. They said, hey, this is private property. You got to go back the way you came and go now. Investigator and ET contactee Stephen Jones is concerned for George's safety. So they scared you? Yeah. Because I didn't know if we were going to get shot. You can understand, this is Arizona's wild, wild UFO West. They'll just shoot you out here, and you'll never find your body. They don't care. They're not going to wear any kind of uniform that would be easily identifiable. There may be black ops out here. What you're asking about, there's been activity, yes. I think that the government is doing some sort of covert operations. And this is all going down near Bradshaw Ranch. Do you have a map anywhere that you might be able to point us out the location? In Charter Zone. Where were the guys that you saw on this map? We were on up here. Through about eight or nine miles, it turns to dirt, and you keep on going. There'll be a gate. You got to go through there. It'll say no trespassing, and then there's a house there. Would you be willing to take us out there? Mm-mm. Yeah. I know you said it's a really dangerous area, but I think it's pretty crucial to our investigation. Um, just be careful what you find. You might not like it. Honestly, we're going to have to go out there even if it's really dangerous. Well, you guys be safe, you know. If George Pilgrim's revelations are true, there could well be black ops at Bradshaw Ranch. Photographer Wilbur Allen takes pictures in the Bradshaw Ranch area, so Mike has arranged to meet him for a second time. Let's get back with Wilbur. I've arranged for him to meet us. We can give him his photographs back and give him our analysis. They want to know if Wilbur has witnessed any black ops whilst photographing UFOs. Hey, Wilbur. Hey. How are you doing? Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Wilbur. How's it going? Very well. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you again. So we want to thank you for letting us analyze your photos. So we all uh, found out some interesting information. When I first saw the time lapse, full resolution, all seven of them, I was shocked and a little bit blown away because it, it clearly to me um, and to our friends who did some analysis shows an object slowing down, coming to a stop. It appears to have lights on it that do not look to me like normal aviation lights. They are crystal clear. That is one of the most extraordinary UFO photographs I've ever seen. Thank you. 
and that's what I got to tell you. Thank you. But I'm, I'm very interested to, uh, to get into the rest of your story. Have you noticed any black ops in or around the Sedona area? Well, we have military activity here, absolutely. So do we know, is there a military base? We need to take a look at that uh, in the map. You know, when you talk... There is a, there is a copter up there. It's a black op. Oh, wow. We got a black ops helicopter in the background, guys. They're all based black ops! Go! Let's go! Let's get after it! Go, 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 go! Where'd it go? Over there! It's over the, it's over the ridge. No, there's no room. Watch out. Go! Four UFO investigators are in Sedona, Arizona. They've heard allegations of a government conspiracy. Government is covering up the fact that UFOs exist. Claims that UFOs and military aircraft fly together. There's a red object and chasing after it. There was black Apache helicopters. And come face to face with black ops in the desert. They're all these black ops, go! Let's go, get out Go, 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 go! go. Now, they are hot on the trail of an unmarked helicopter. No, there's no room. Watch out. Watch out. There he is. Look. That is a military helicopter. In fact, it's a Black Hawk. There's no markings on it. And the filthy weird thing is, there's a base around here for like 130 miles. Mike, I'm telling you, this is Black Ops. It's right there. Put your foot down, man. I got it, I got it. We're running out of road, We're running out of stop, stop. Rats. Oh, man. Back ups, no markings. That was the real deal. That's what we've been looking for. And we've lost it. I'm telling you, we're right on top of this thing. It was heading straight for the rocks. We've got to get down there. I said we have to go down there. Let's see if anything's right, over well, there. Let's, let's do it let's now. Let's do it while the thing's yeah. in motion. The helicopter finally disappears over Bradshaw Ranch. The team suspect that the ranch could be a center for covert military activity. Despite the risks, they continue their investigation. Finally, after an hour, they reach the perimeter. Ah, that's it. Look, buildings. Well, I can't see the helicopter. Doesn't look like anybody's been here for quite a while. No. <sighs> All right. There's signs on the gate. What do they say? Yeah. Closed to public use. Look, the sign says this property is owned by the United States of America. Why on earth would your government buy this property and then just leave it empty? I don't know. I, personally, I can think of a lot of reasons why they would want to keep this area fenced off. I mean, it could be generally be land preservation. could be that these are historic buildings that have been here for a long time. Yeah, and all the historic buildings in London have Black Hawk helicopters landing on well, them. Well, no, we, we didn't see them, actually. We didn't see the helicopter land here. We saw it come in this direction. We saw the black helicopter coming here low over this property. Look, guys, it, Black Ops is not a game. If there's something that's really happened here, they're here in any way, shape, or form, we need to be careful. All of our investigations have been leading to this spot. This is it. We've got to get stuck in. Okay. Well, Marine, why don't you and I, you want to go with me, and we'll just walk the perimeter and take a look around and see if we see anything interesting, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. While you're looking for things that aren't there, we'll look for things that might be there. I'll use the Geiger counter, and we'll see if we can find some readings. Radioactive black helicopters? Well, we may find something else here. I don't know. Come on, okay. We're going to look. All right, guys. 
The team split up. Mike and Maureen head up the hill to check the perimeter for evidence of black ops. While Stephen wants to know from an ex-CIA operative, Daryl, exactly what black ops is all about. You know, Daryl, what continues to puzzle me is that the American government bought this ranch and then they've just left it empty. Look, the nature of black ops is to leave things in plain sight. When I was in the company, we had entire installations that you couldn't tell what they were. It looked like one thing and it was something else. That's a cover story. You don't put up a big sign that says this is a secret government installation. You don't do that. So, Daryl, what you're saying is something left in plain sight doesn't attract attention. That's correct. Meanwhile, at the top of the hill, Mike and Maureen continue to hunt for signs of black ops. It almost looks like there's a pathway up here. But I'm pretty sure it goes over this hill and through the woods. Let's go up this way. Let's keep going around the perimeter because I can't see through yeah, these bushes. Yeah, a lot of brush here. But you know, I mean, it just looks like a ranch to me. It doesn't look like anything special. Yeah, but also, how big is this ranch? There could be anything over the hill. I sure don't see a helicopter pad. Let's go further. Mike and Maureen have yet to find any evidence of black ops. But at the bottom of the hill, Daryl plans to use his Geiger counter to look for evidence of UFOs. The little tiny click that you hear occasionally is simply background radiation. I mean, it, this is very, very, very So normal. that's nothing to worry about? Nothing. It means nothing. What we're looking for is uh, raised radioactive levels. This is a radioactive sample. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a cloth material, but it's radioactive. The reason I brought this is to, is to demonstrate when you put that radioactive sample near it, All that's right. hot. All right. OK? And we shouldn't get a hot reading in this no. area. If it does click more than that little click, it could be indication of a UFO. Why should a UFO leave a fingerprint of radioactivity? One of the reasons that radioactive traces will show up in an area where a UFO has landed is because radiation is in space. When a UFO is in space, it's going to bring that radiation back with it. It's going to collect onto the body of that craft. And if it touches ground, it's going to be there. We're going to look around here and see if we can find any signature. And if you would, please assist me. And I will look around, and if I find anything at all, I would like for you to just maybe get a rock or something and put it wherever I find a signature, if, if I find anything. Okay. Can you do that for yeah, me? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. You get a higher reading right there. I've got a signature here. I've got three clicks right across here, right across right. this area here. Just, if you would, just put a, a, right. a rock or two That's there. Thank you. Thing. Thank you. Another one. Would you put a rock right there? Yep. If you would. All right. Well, two stones is a pattern, as far as I'm concerned. Right here, Stephen. Right there. Hey, did it right there. It's pretty dang amazing. You know what? We've got a pattern here, mate. Right here. I'm getting a higher reading right there. What do you think? Well, uh, it is fascinating. It does have a radioactive signature, a trace all the way around. You know what, Daryl? You know what I'm seeing here? <sighs> the shape of the landing gear of a UFO. Four expert investigators are in Sedona, Arizona. They've heard allegations from an ex-senator that the government knows how UFOs work. Government covering up UFO technology. They've seen Wilbur Allen's photograph of a UFO stopping over Bradshaw Ranch. It was slowing down, it stopped. And they have just uncovered a radioactive signature on the perimeter of the site. You know what I'm seeing here? The shape of the landing gear of a UFO. This is incredible. Look, Wilbur took that photograph of that spaceship, that UFO, and it was right above here at night time. So I, and I hope you do, want to come back here tonight. Well, I do. I'm really interested in coming back tonight. Meanwhile, a mile away at the top of the hill, Maureen is prepared to breach the perimeter in order to get a closer look at the ranch. 
but Mike doesn't want to risk it. I haven't seen any black ops or guys with guns yet. Yeah, no men in black, but you know, I will give Steven this. It, it's a little, it's a little creepy here. It's a little kind of a... It's an eerie silence, well, there's I will like, say that. It's like a ghost town. I don't know, Mike. I think we should just go in. I mean, nobody's up here. Oh, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. This is like two years stay in a federal penitentiary for violating this thing. So why don't we do this the easy way? Why don't we just call up the Forestry Service? It's their sign on the fence. Why don't we just call them up? We'll get permission to come on the ranch, and we can come on here with no problems. There really shouldn't be any big deal about it, right? But it's a lot easier than getting in some trouble. Yeah, it's just, it's just so tempting because it looks so empty. It's. I know, but... It's also a federal offense. Well, let's keep going. All right. Unable to breach the perimeter of the ranch without breaking the law, the investigators return to Sedona, where Mike calls the government agency to try and gain legal access to the property. Hi, yeah. Can we get access to the Bradshaw Ranch? Um, you know, there are structures there, that there are historic structures, and we really are not encouraging people to go around them. Yeah, I understand that, but why can't we get onto the ranch? It's really, it's, it's our ability to try and, and ensure that the structures don't become damaged, um, because they're, you know, we want to protect them. Okay, so there's absolutely no way that we are going to get into that property. We're not going to authorize that at this point, no. Okay, bye. Despite the government denying access, Mike's still convinced there's a rational explanation for what's going on at Bradshaw Ranch. It's obvious to me at this point that we're not going to get access to the ranch itself. I know Daryl and Steven are itching to get back to the area because of their radioactive stone circle that they found. But I'm convinced that if there is anything unusual that we will see there, that I'm going to be able to identify it and put this thing to a close right then and there. Once darkness falls, the investigators head out to a vantage point overlooking Bradshaw Ranch to scan the night skies for UFOs. But the reality is they're not going to let us on the ranch. They're not going to let us anywhere near the place. We have no choice but to just head out to the area, stake it out, see if we see anything. Don't forget that fantastic photo that Wilbur gave us of the spacecraft slowing down right over this area. That, combined with the radioactive signature that Daryl and I got down on the ranch, means we're heading in the right direction. Bluntly, Stephen, I think if we do see anything besides satellites, airplanes, it's going to be military. We're going to see UFOs tonight, and they're going to be easy. Well, the skies have certainly cleared, Daryl. They are reasonably clear. The investigators are using cutting-edge infrared technology to make sure they don't miss a thing. Do you see anything? Mm -mm. You got an airplane up there at 2 o'clock. Flashing light straight ahead. That looks like it could be slow enough to be a satellite, though. We're hoping to catch something unusual. Now, it would be great if we caught some sort of unidentified craft that even Mike and I will agree with Daryl and Steven on. That would be pretty fantastic. There's an object moving underneath. You see this star right here? Yeah. yeah right there, okay. That's a plane. Okay, whoa, that was weird. Just had a bright light that shot across really quick and disappeared. Guessing it was a shooting star, though. I'm not looking for proof that they exist. I know they exist. All I'm seeing is airplanes so far. I'm afraid they don't do party tricks. I have not seen anything at all. We mustn't forget this is our agenda. We're looking for them. If it isn't their agenda to appear in the skies over us tonight, it won't happen. But, you know, this is great. This is really exciting. And I can see something moving. There's something moving right above there. Look. Denied access by the government to Bradshaw Ranch. So there's absolutely no way that we are going to get into that property. We're not going to authorize that at this point. The four expert UFO investigators returned under cover of darkness and witnessed strange lights in the sky. 
and I can see something moving. There's something moving right above there, look. Oh, wow, okay, up here. Have you got it? There's three, three right there. Right, right, directly above. Up there, they're spreading apart. Those three? Yeah, they're not blinking and they're spread, they were together and now they just spread out in the opposite directions. Oh yeah, you got, actually there are three things moving. There are three of them. That is something. That's something pretty strange. Uh, we saw a UFO. Uh, it was a long sighting, three or four minutes at least, until it finally disappeared over the Sedona area. Those were no aircraft. There's no question about that. Everything else I saw tonight, I can explain as sure. plane or satellite. We, we only need one, Mikey. I know. We only well, need one, mate. You know, guys, uh, we didn't see any military stuff or drones. I mean, that's what I thought we'd see. But what we did see out there, those three objects, the, the angles at which they came across, the sky, the positions that they assumed, the formation, it was just, it was just so weird. I can't put, I, I can't tell you what it was. This is a hot spot. This is a hot spot for UFO activity. And I'm sure now that the government and the military know all about it. Listen to me. We have seen a remarkable event tonight. I mean, unbelievable UFO. We've seen Wilbur's pictures before that, unbelievable pictures. And on top of that, we've seen evidence of black operations. We saw a black helicopter, no writing on it. I know, I gotta be honest with you. It was really strange. I don't have an easy identification for that. But I do think there is something weird going on here in Sedona and especially over Bradshaw Ranch now. The investigators now have first-hand proof of black helicopters and strange craft over Bradshaw Ranch. So far, they have been unable to connect the two. The following morning, Daryl takes the team to meet a contact who might be able to help. I know a man named Dr. Bob Wood who's got some remarkable documentation. I think he might be able to shed some light on Sedona and our investigation here. Dr. Wood has been investigating extraterrestrial related phenomena for over 30 years. He's been leaked top secret documents, which he claims prove that the government analyzes crashed UFOs and develops new technology from them in a process known as reverse engineering. Hi, Dr. Wood. Hi, Maureen Ellsbury. Hi, Maureen. Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Wood, good to see you. Stephen Jones, nice yeah, to meet you. Hi, it's Mike Barry. Nice Hi. to see you. So, Dr. Wood, we spoke with a lot of witnesses in the Sedona area who have seen UFOs, strange black helicopters, and we ourselves have also sighted a lot of strange anomalous activity. What do you think? It's pretty clear that Sedona is probably part of the classified top secret research project entitled the Non-Terrestrial Program. It was started in 1942. There was a top secret document that said that we had, in fact, recovered one craft in the San Bernardino Mountains and the Navy salvaged one craft at sea. And they are not of uh, terrestrial origin. President Roosevelt wrote, we want you to start understanding how the UFOs work. So you're saying that the US government actually has had crashed extraterrestrial technology since the 1940s at the very least. Well, yeah, I think most people are not aware of the fact that we've had these craft recovered since 1942. I've long suspected that there is a cover-up by the government with regards to ET activity and Dr. Bob Wood has the evidence to prove it. Can you tell me anything about what they've done with that or how they have developed it? It's pretty clear that, you know, any military person standing around looking at a crashed UFO would ask himself the question, how do they work? And so they take them apart. And if they figure it out, then the government can use that technology. And that's the way that the reverse engineering process works. Several things specifically came from recovery of crashed UFOs. The first recovered craft yielded the transistor. Integrated circuitry was described in a document in 1947, long before there was an integrated circuit. And lasers are a result of reverse engineering craft. So what specifically is the documentary evidence that you have for reverse engineering? I have one quite specific document to do with fiber optics. Yeah, this is a report to the commanding general at Air Material Command 
on what we've learned from studying the craft. It says flight instruments and controls are activated by optical waveguide fibers similar to glass rods, except they are flexible and have a plastic cladding wrap. Then the key thing is the date of the document is 2 September 1947. Okay, so, so you have a document. This is from the Research and Development Laboratory, it says. This document talks about fiber optic technology in 1947. Dr. Wood, fiber optic technology didn't come into the vernacular. People weren't even talking about it. The idea didn't even seem to come into the cultural consciousness until 30, 40 years later. Correct. I have enormous respect for Dr. Robert Wood. I think he's done some amazing work. But the reality is that our scientists were developing all sorts of exotic technologies anyway at that time. And to me, the connection to these crash flying saucers is tenuous. And where did you get this document? The majority of the documents, that, such as the ones that I have here, were leaked. So what's your authentication process, Doctor? I mean, how do we know that this is really a legitimate document from the research laboratory? Authenticating questioned leaked documents is an orderly process. Mm -hmm. You take the ink, you can drill out a one millimeter piece of ink and then do a electrophoresis on it to see how old the ink was. You can do the same thing with pencils. Mm -hmm. And I have authenticated this document. So, on a percentage basis, what's your certainty that this is an authentic document? 80%, 70%, 90%? The authenticity probability of this document is 99.5. Oh, wow. wow. Whew. That's it. Okay, that's, that's the smoking that's gun. That's what I wanted to know. The UFO investigators have mounting evidence that the government may be covering up alien activity in Sedona. Multiple eyewitness accounts of UFOs. I saw a gigantic craft. An authenticated UFO photograph. This object was not faked. A black ops helicopter. A radioactive signature. This is incredible. All around government-owned Bradshaw Ranch and now leaked top secret documents from a well-respected aeronautics engineer that add further credibility to the claim that the government has access to alien technology through reverse engineering of crashed UFOs. Dr. Wood, where did this reverse technology take place? Many people ask, where are the recovered craft? And the correct answer for that is they're at top secret locations. So do you think that there could be a correlation between UFO hotspots and secret military bases? Multiple sightings associated with one location suggest that there might be bases nearby. Is there any possibility that there's a secret military base or reverse engineering here in Sedona area? Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Jeez. What people see when they see craft around Sedona are a mixture of the craft that we are developing routinely that are man-made mm -hmm. and then ones that we have been able to create using advanced technology from UFOs. Some of the craft that we are developing are sufficiently advanced that they're indistinguishable from alien UFOs. Dr. Wood, if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is that when people see what we would call UFOs here in Sedona or other hotspots and places where these sightings take place, that what they could be seeing is either our own developed flying saucer technology or they could be seeing extraterrestrial spacecraft. Is that correct? The UFOs that are seen either belong to us or belong to ETs. Well, Dr. Wood, thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. You know, as, as somebody who deals in the same kind of stuff, I'm always looking for documents, photographs, evidence. It's been enlightening, to say the least. Bob, I thought that your contribution to our investigation was going to be the cherry on the cake, but it has gone way beyond that. This, we've experienced the holy grail here. So thank you so much. This will stay with me forever. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right, thank you.
You know, honestly, guys, we've seen more here than I expected. Dr. Wood's documents are very impressive, but to me, everything that we've seen does point to some sort of secret military activity. We've met a lot of the people here, and they saw the same things we did. They saw black helicopters, they saw the black ops, even threatened by some of these people. I actually fear for some of the people in Sedona. Former state senator David Schmidt had some very serious allegations against the government in regards to a cover-up. We didn't really have anything to back it up. But after talking with Dr. Robert Wood, I think it's quite plausible that the government knows a lot more than they're letting on about UFO activity. If the government is concealing alien craft in secret bases across America, where are the pilots of these UFOs? Find out next time on Uncovering Aliens.